Welcome to Cars on Call. I am automotive journalist and gastroenterologist Steve Schutz. I'm here with trauma surgeon Stefan Moran and automotive connoisseur, historian, collector Adams Hudson. And I want to give a plug. We had an amazing guest last week. It was uh, Katie Gaddy, uh, as in Gaddy, uh, or, or Money with Katie. That's what it is. And she's a millennial and she's much younger than us. And she was great. She had all kinds of financial advice uh, that was very relevant to anybody who wants to buy a car, particularly younger people. And uh, she's a car enthusiast who just bought a Porsche Macan. So she was a great guest. Uh, please go back and listen to that if you haven't already. Uh, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. We certainly did. And uh, without further ado, guys, uh, let's roll. We're going to talk about Land Cruiser, Porsche 911 ST, uh, car spotting, this or that safety and we're going to go car names we love and hate so without further ado uh the land cruiser the new one just launched uh stefan do we like it well to me it just looks like they an fj stayed in the womb two weeks too long um <laughs> what <laughs> yeah it, it looks like an fj that just stayed in the womb too long it's got gestational diet the fj and, cruiser right yeah the fj cruiser man <laughs> It's just, uh, you know, there it is. Um, I, listeners, I put a, you know, I, I mean, I, I looking at this thing. <laughs> so when you think about when you resurrect an old name as a car company, I'm looking for the placenta. Yeah, I see. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of homage to the past. I think you know, Bronco nailed it, um, and there's just, I don't know. It's got this huge, straightforward, big front end on it. I think the back of it's okay, but I think the front end just, I don't know. It's a pedestrian killer, pedicyclist killer. I don't know. I just, it doesn't, it just doesn't do it for me. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure. I I, I like some of the throwback. I agree with you. I, th I think, you know, the Bronco is just sort of the 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 class of the field on on leading how a a, a retro look can be brought into the modern era. I was very glad and relieved and 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 slightly um, uh, gratified because I believe we said, or Steve, maybe you're credited with having said that when the Land Cru Cruiser left uh, before, and it hadn't been gone very long, I mean, it was barely in in the ground. Oh, we've gotten rid of this nameplate that we've had forever. You know, it was a six thousand or seven thousand pound, hundred thousand dollar car. It had gone so far from its roots. And I kind of like that this car's back. Um, I I don't love it's way too great a family uh, familiarity. It just it, it looks too too much like a forerunner to me, or or like the FG in the in the womb too long. Um, and it it's a four cylinder vehicle. I kind of wish they had struck somewhere in the middle with the power plant. It's a he it's a very healthy four cylinder uh, coupled with a hybrid. And Lord Toyota has stayed true to that. You know they. So like, you know, we're not going full out EV, even though they gave us the, the Prius to kind of kick things off. This is a, a hybridized mm -hmm. vehicle with uh, how many horsepower? It's like 300 and where is it? 326 total horsepower, 48 of them coming from the hybrid drive. I I feel like we've said before, they're going to sell every one they make. They claim the base price is in the mid 50s. I'd, I'd own one. I kind of like it. I, I also like it. It's got, you know, it's obviously kind of leaning when it comes to retro look. It's leaning toward the second generation, which was the FJ60, which was square. Uh, I kind of like that. Um, to me, it looks very much like uh, a the old Land Cruiser uh, mated, since we're going uh, talking about that, babies, with the new Defender. To me, it looks a lot like the new Defender, like a Toyota version of the new Land Rover Defender. Uh, I do like that it's smaller. We, I, we've all been saying we would be psyched about that. I would bet Adams that they will have a V6 uh, option because it's you know it's the same platform as a Tundra. A Tundra has a V6, so um, I guess I'm not like enthusiastically in favor of it, but I like it. I think yeah. it's just a, something about the front end for me. You know, it's kind of like the new BMW front end. It's just that that bumper. I like the rest of it, but I don't know that front end just doesn't. The front end doesn't do it for me. All right. Since you said FJ Cruiser, and I, I do like that analogy, Stefan, would you like this better if it had round headlights like the FJ Cruiser? I think so. 
Yeah, me too. I think I think it's just got these little slit triple I beams up top with the chrome. It's like those don't belong on this kind of vehicle in my mind. I don't know. Just minor. But, you know, like like is going to be whatever. It doesn't matter what I like. They're going to sell them all. Um, but I've got an opinion and I don't hesitate to voice it. Adams, round headlights. Yes, no. I like round headlights. Uh, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I sort of like the halo look. Uh, on on some of the modern lights, I do not like being blinded by oncoming LEDs. That may have to be a future safety topic. Uh, they've just gotten way too bright. I don't think our our eyeballs are made for it. But as far as aesthetics, looking at it with the car parked and the lights off, I'm a fan of the round. Another um, important vehicle was just introduced, and uh, you know, Land Cruiser we we like and not maybe not love. Uh, here's one that I certainly love. Uh, of course, I can't have one. Porsche in celebrating the 75th year of them. Uh, they were founded in 1948. And in celebrating the 60th year of the Porsche 911, the Porsche 911 was introduced in September of 1963 at the um, <clears throat> Frankfurt Auto Show. So uh, in celebration of both those birthdays, they released the 911 ST. It is basically uh the very limited production uh gt3 rs which is a very track oriented car but without a big wing it's lightweight has a lot of power it has a manual transmission only and it's for the streets so do we like this adams you're the porsche guy well you know it's it's just a, it's another in the way extended evolution of how many things can they do to the 911 platform and there's yet another one i didn't see that one coming i don't think a lot of people did but you know it's 295 grand on the base price that particular one i think is their commemorative color is it shadow blue have i got that color right they have a shadow know. green and something else but was that the right name Stephen? i don't know okay i, th I think that's what it's called uh you you can you can keep the uh, the gumballs and all the decals and stuff, or maybe that's just for the people who really really want to scream in traffic that they have something special. Um, but you know when you have five hundred and eighteen horsepower out of a four liter naturally aspirated motor, and the vehicle weighs three thousand and eighty five pounds, you got a winner. I think that's a great formula, and uh, I, I configured one today. And mine only came up to a mere $326,000, but, <laughs> but it matters not because it won't be available to mere mortals. Yeah, that's why I, I love it and I hate it at the same time. I love what they've done with this cart. It's to me, it's, you know, another homage to the internal combustion engine, all the right things, lightweight, performing, comfort, deleted a bunch of the boy racer stuff, but they're going to, these are going to end up in collector. In collections they're not going to end up on the road so i absolutely love it i think it's the greatest porsche modern porsche ever but unfortunately as you said adams you know we can do configurators and that is as close we'll ever get so it, it does piss me off that they make this model that you know that should actually not cost a whole lot more because it's got some lesser content but nope they you know they, they had a huge sticker price and uh but it, and but we'll never see one yeah there is no way uh the gt3 the gt3 touring the gt3 rs they don't actually limit production they're not gonna make a lot but there's not like an actual number um this is gonna make they're only gonna make 1963 you know get it 1963 the year of their birth only 1963 of these will be built which guarantees it's a collector and that's worldwide it's, it's guaranteed it's a collector card that we will never see one uh, they'll, if to the extent anyone can get one, they're going to get it over sticker. Uh, they're going to trade for 400,000 or something and they'll go up in value. By the way, uh, Adams, to your point earlier, uh, they are milking this generation of the 911, milking these special editions, which mint them money. They are getting tons of cash from here you go GT3, GT3 Touring, GT3 RS, the Dakar. Don't forget that, the off road one. The Sport Classic, the ST, which is now, and of course, they'll have a GT2 and presumably a GT2 RS that are coming. I thought there was a GT4 RS coming too. That's the yeah, that'll be a Cayman car. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but it, the, the, there was something, you know, and, and even though you mentioned all the GT cars, let's not forget, forget that every single one of those mutations is available um, or mostly available. And, and when you down, uh, 
load to the target. You get the target 4S, you get the commemorative edition target, the, the heritage edition version. You've got the, the, the GTS. And then you go into the base 911. It how many there, there are probably 30 different 911s you could get somewhere and, in that number. And it's just it's just too, too much. And Stefan is right. You know, if you add the, the G, it's not like the GT4 Cayman or the GT4 Cayman RS. It's not like they're cheap. Those are also money makers. So I think they're just milking this to get a lot of money uh, for uh, electric car development. I, I did think of another thing. Uh, in addition to all these special Porsches, uh, Ferrari just released their SUV. It used to be, and Adam, I want to hear your point because you're you're your rebuttal to this because you're you've owned Porsches. It used to be that Ferrari was limited to uh, 8,000, and that was going to be their cap forever. Now they're around 10,000, probably going up. Probably is. I, I, I tell you, the, I'm, I'm about to make what is probably the, the most off-topic point to make, but uh, I had the misfortune of watching the Beanie Baby movie the other night. It's a sort of a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an it's an acted out show. Uh, Zach uh, uh, Galifianakis is in it. And he he plays, you know, the guy who is Ty Beanie Babies. And the point to this is, is that they they continued to make and milk limited editions, you know, sort of forced scarcity. And they marketed forced scarcity until they could do it no more. And they overproduced. I don't think Porsche is going to be following that model. But I'm just telling you, you cannot keep this many balls in the air forever. That's my thought. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's stick with you because you you spotted a car. Uh, I've seen this around occasionally. I think the last one I saw was probably 10 years ago. Very rare. Uh, I'm not going to say cool, but boy, it's different. It is indeed. Uh, I, I was in a, in the mountains of Montana and just down the road from our Airbnb where we would have to go from our Airbnb to downtown. I look over from this. <laughs> there is wow. the scene. Now, tell me you wouldn't have done a double take. All of us would have. About any car guy. It's just sitting over there. <laughs> and there's like, like obviously a camper. There's old snowmobiles and crud in the background just riding away. And uh, folks, that is a Bricklin SV1. They made those an entire two years. Uh, Malcolm Bricklin, who sort of was famous or infamous, take your pick, on uh, having imported the uh, Subaru 360 back. In the day and he made millions of dollars doing it it was not really an automobile and he it's a whole different story if you want to look that one up but he took his money and he said he's going to make his own car so if you sort of think about the delorean story instead of going to ireland he went to canada and in brunswick way, canada to, he I, said, I need to interrupt you because you got to give a year i i know roughly when this was but uh this was not 1995 it was not 1995. It was 1974 is when the car was launched. And then they see they ended in 1975 and sort of shame and bankruptcy. And that car, I think they ended up making about 3,000 of them. Uh, they made a very few in 76, which probably renumbered 75s. Uh, they made about 2,100 in 75. And Stefan, you might be semi-interested to know that belt line that goes around the car that's darker they were not all two-tone by the way but that belt line is actually the side of the frame so the the side impact was not built into the doors which is kind of weak because that opens it was actually the frame so the passenger sat a little bit below the the frame those doors are gull wing which was a good and bad idea and you can see the energy absorption on the front end with the bumper that sort of telescopes in and out and folks all you got to do is look at like a 1975 Ford Granada. I mean, pick pick your evil and look how horrible those bumpers were not integrated. And the Bricklin SV1 did a reasonable job. Stuffed up front was a uh, AMC 360 in its first year that you could have gotten with the four speed, by the way. And then in the second year, AMC ran into supply problems. Imagine that. And uh, Ford supplied a 351. And I heard, I cannot believe it. Jay Leno made a very un unusual mistake on his encyclopedic recall of cars. In a recent review, he called it a 351 Cleveland. I promise you the Canadians did not put a Cleveland in their car. <laughs> it was a Windsor and uh, made, made it to a three-speed automatic. 
Go. This, this scar is interesting. So it's actually called the Brooklyn SB1, which stands for Safety Vehicle 1. So he designed this car. He wanted a cool looking sports car, but he wanted a safe one. And that was kind of kind of be the mantra of the vehicle that you can drive a sports car and you can actually be safe. But if you look at the picture, you go online, you see it's got a massive A pillar. You're sitting way down inside of the car. So you could barely see over the dash. You know, you felt like your grandmother sitting in this thing because you could hardly see thick A pillar, small windows, high belt line. The roof was low. The pedals were too high. The seats were mediocre support. <laughs> but it actually did. And I got some crash test p- oh, crash shit, test pictures hell. here. It actually did extremely well, Adams, the, um, in crash testing. Had an integral roll bar. And um, here's the next picture where they drop a big crane on the thing. And you can see that it didn't impact it. So, yeah, it absolutely was an incredibly safe vehicle um, designed that way from the ground up. Steph, you're saying that the big fat A pillars. See, I thought that was just ugly manufacturing. Is that where the the those integrated roll bar? Yes. And that's why you had the gull wing. So the gull wing doors were to allow for the integrated um, roll cage. So actually a lot of great design features. No kidding. But unfortunately... It just didn't pan out for him, but um, that's a bad. I remember that car. Is it and who did who sold those Buick dealers? He Which, wanted to. My gosh, your your okay. memory is unbelievable. He actually uh, tried to make a deal with with uh, Opel of Germany, okay. who was sold in Buick dealers at the time, and they just never could really get the distribution right. Because I saw one at a dealership as a kid, and I was like, "Whoa, that is so cool." Um, but, you know, it had this plastic polyurethane body that didn't like UV light. It started to bubble separate, but um, cool car. I can't believe you saw one set down in the field like that. Yeah, it took my, all my, my restraint not to go up to the door. <laughs> yeah. My, my take on this whole era was uh, for whatever reason, uh, it was just a very ugly decade. The 70s were marked by ugly cars and the Bricklin was was actually pretty good looking but you look at the Granada the Velara all these different cars they were ugly the movie stars were ugly the hairstyles were ugly the clothes were ugly houses were ugly shag carpet uh you know the 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 the, the wood paneling walls uh avocado know, it, appliances yes the appliances were ugly the colors were ugly the plates were ugly the the glasses were ugly the towels were ugly <laughs> But aside from that, you know, and it, but but that that's that's true. I, I actually remember there, there, there was a late night um, show called Tomorrow, and the host was uh, Tom Snyder, and it was not a funny late night show. It was a, an informative, quasi political sometimes uh, show. And Malcolm Bricklin was on that show, and I'm not kidding you. When that car was sitting in the in the studio of this television station late at night and i'm watching this very serious show with this guy talking about this car it was the best looking thing of the 70s i couldn't believe how nice it looked of course it was brand new and in, under dramatic lights yeah but, but unlike it, it, unlike and i agree it was it was good looking at the time but unlike for example uh the car spotting we did a couple weeks ago which was the sl the 260 sl mercedes from the 60s now that looks elegant and beautiful. The Brooklyn does not. I think the only thing that wasn't ugly in this in the seventies was Barbara Bach and Julie Christie. <laughs> I got to mention one thing. You mentioned the bad appliances, and I cannot. We'll move on. The color of that car, the way that car was produced, that is not paint atop fiberglass. That is an acrylic top coat, and the way they figured out how to um, paint their cars or color their cars was to borrow from the, um, from the, the showers and sinks of the day. Uh, They impregnated the acrylic with color. So that orange or red or whatever it is, they called it safety red. And though it's very, it's an orangish red Uh, it's in the body of the car. So you could scratch it and the color goes beneath the surface and that was bonded to fiberglass, which is stuff on mentioned, you know, separated about the first time you parked it in the in the heat. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And and uh, despite the ugliness of the era, uh, that body and that paint was not the only thing impregnated in the 70s. <laughs> Indeed. Well, that car, uh, 
ba- basically did, did, did not make it through pregnancy because it failed <laughs> miserably. All right. Uh, I love that you saw one. Uh, Stefan, safety. All right. So we're going to talk about um, smartphones today. So listeners, you've heard me talk about the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, and um, they put out a lot of publications. And, you know, their big goal is is to decrease outlay and cost through car crashes and human suffering through improving automotive safety, a little bit different viewpoint. So Ian Regan published, uh, they publish articles all the time on the website. And the title was Smartphones Lead to Distraction, but Could They Also Prevent It? So he's taking an interesting look at the whole smartphone thing, because when we think about distracted drivers, immediately we think the phone's a bad thing. Well, he's taken the opposite view. How can we make the phone a good thing? Because, you know, they really are just everyday part of our lives now. And if you look at all police reports and everything, we know it's grossly underreported, but they only said about 3,350 people were killed in distraction-related crashes um, and actually could say that specifically 382 were involving cell phone use. But we all know those are underestimates. It is way higher than that. You know, but people don't want to admit they were talking on their phone when they crashed. Wait a minute, they're attributing cell phone use and distraction. How many (laughs) How many deaths? 3,350 in distraction out of, related out of crashes. 40, out of 40 out of 40 something 40, thousand? Yeah, there's no way. Um, and they get at specifically say 382 in 2021. We know, and it's predicted it's actually three times higher than that. And they think about 6% of all crashes involve true distraction by the driver from the cell phone. Um, but what's interesting is some of the biggest pl- players in the smart um, phone industry are actually have decided to become um, or eager to be part of the solution. And we think about our Apple iPhone. Um, That phone has GPS, all these technologies. How can we utilize that technology in the phone, in the vehicle to make the experience of driving safer and let the phone be the technology? Think about it. If we're going to incorporate technology into the architecture of the car, that's 10, 15 years out going through National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, getting approval, whereas our phones are constantly updating. And it really is a better way to go to uh, to put technology into the vehicle. It would save a lot of time. Think about it. Already, how many number of people that, that got instant GPS? You, know, you didn't have to go out and buy the little, what was that little boxy GPS thing you'd pop on your dash? Can't remember Garmin. what? Yeah, that Garmin. And now you yeah. just use your phone. And Apple and Google have it. They know where you are. They know how fast you're going. They know traffic conditions. Waze tells you about obstacles in the road, cars on the side of the road. And think about, I mean, I think about the number of times that obstacle in the road and I slow down and there it is. A tire is blown apart or there's a couch in the middle of the road. And, you know, Waze, you know, saved my butt. So think about it. So how can we get the phones to be more incorporated from a safety standpoint well kind of disappointingly you know when you start when you get up a new iphone the setup asks you if you want to block calls and notifications while you're driving well unfortunately only 20 percent or one in five users actually opt in on that they actually just don't want it and they turn it off but we got to give apple and google credit credit for um making apps now that block calls and notifications while the user Um, is using the vehicle and then you know apple updated so that they want it more palatable more usable so you have the do not disturb but you can allow breakthrough alerts or urgent messages from designated contacts and then you can also do music and directions by using voice commands so we've seen a lot of movement from apple and google to make utilization of the smartphone a safer experience in the vehicle as well as augmenting safety and the phone being better um you know ideally it it wouldn't matter you wouldn't have a choice it would just automatically go to do not disturb when you get in the car and it would make you manually switch it off but we know how we hate that in cars when you get in and you have to turn something off that they want on all the time but you know europe has what they call intelligent speed assistance and it's it's and since 2022 you don't have a choice and the rental car i had in ireland has this 
it's going to automatically beep when you're going over the speed limit. It, it lets you know, and it doesn't stop. So, you know, of course, in America, that would be a violation. And I'm sure one of our amendments by some, somebody would not want that. But um, I think, you know, it works. And I actually have on my ways, I have it set up so that it beeps when I'm going 10 miles over the speed limit. I do that as so I don't get caught in speed traps and stuff. But um, so I do like that technology so you know and then you can take it one step further if you want to save money in your insurance you can download your insurance company's safe driver app which monitors your driving behavior and then you can get lower rates so the technology is there right in our hand and one of the big breakthroughs that we'd like to see happening is where you can actually put your phone up on your dashboard use it as a dash cam and it could provide forward collision warning um, and you know, you're not going to have the automatic emergency braking, which we know saves a lot of crashes and injuries, but if you could now utilize your phone to do that, basically retrofitting your vehicle. So we know that, um, that by itself would reduce crashes by, um, rear end crashes by 27%. So the technology is there. Um, Apple's moved the most forward with this. Google's right behind. Um, so I think and the point of the article is we really need to get the the big companies on board with this because it's so much easier to update the phone and utilize the technology in your phone than it is to update or buy a new vehicle. So I think it's, I'd say I, I really enjoyed this article and um, he's thinking very forward with this. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity and hopefully we'll see some movement from the uh, big cell phone manufacturers. Well, staff, we'll put the, uh, we'll put the, the uh, citation in our show notes and, and uh, the, the uh, website. Yeah, good good thing to go to do. Um, it it seems like you know that that way underestimation of the number of deaths deaths back to your early early point uh, right. for people who are actually on the phone. Could they not tie that in to somebody who at the same time? as the vehicle crash, they were actually using the telephone? Is there not, will technology not allow that? Well, it, it, you know, when my kids were growing up and started driving, I told them, if you're in a wreck or you get a ticket, I'm going to pull up your cell phone data. And I can, I'll know exactly the time of your phone call. I'll know that the crash by the police report. And I said, you will lose your license for one year. I will park the car for one year. And I showed them the, um, cell phone bill where it shows the time that they were texting and the time they're making phone calls. Yeah. So I said, you know, so the deal is if you're in a wreck, it's extremely difficult for the party involved, other party to actually get those records uh, as admissible evidence in court. Gosh, you were just thinking in the matter of safety, as opposed to who's going to get sued and who's going to have to pay. You would just think that they could tie that into distraction and then support the case you're making here, which is, hey, guys, we got the technology. Let's just get together and save some lives. Well, no, and, and you know, the other thing is your vehicle has an event data recorder in it, a black box that can tell exactly the time of crash, how fast you're going, whether or not you hit the brakes, whether or not you came off the accelerator, whether or not you made an invasive maneuver, that's all in there. But trying to get that data, you know, at someone's at fault. I mean, somebody you know, crashes and, and dies, you know, and it's a single vehicle collision, you know, do you really want to show the family the records? Hey, you know, Uncle Jimmy was on his cell phone doing 80 miles an hour um, and, you know, it, but I can see in two car collisions, finding somebody at fault, the event data recorder could give you a lot of information as well as the cell phone. The cell phone knows GPS deceleration. I mean, if you have your iPhone in your pocket and you fall and hit the ground, it asks you, are you okay? It knows by, and we've talked about the other case where the kids were in the on a cord. It sent out the emergency call. That was a Google Android phone. So this data exists in the phone. And the point of this article is, Let's engage Apple, Google, Android, and let's find ways to make these devices become a safety device in the vehicle. I, I think, think it's I think it's wonderful. 
I think it's wonderful too. And 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 Stephen, before you jump in there, just when you mentioned the black box, isn't that the thing they do to de-engineer and reverse engineer exactly what happened in a, an airplane crash? And why would yes. they not do the very right. same thing here? I, and it and it's less about exoneration or whose insurance has to pay, and more about saving lives. I, agree. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I like the idea of using your uh, your your cell phone as a as a dash cam. I mean, my gosh, if you, I you think that's that, wonderful. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah. And by the way, you know, if you have a dash cam, that's a really good way to deconstruct an accident. Um, um, and a lot of people have a dash cam just for that reason. If you could do the same thing with your cell phone, that would be great. So, I mean, right, think thanks, about Stephon. it. They could do with your, you know, with your cell phone. It's the technology is there that you could have forward forward collision warning. You could have lane departure warning. I mean, you know, the phone, the cameras on these phones are amazing, and they're they've got live GPS data, and they know where you are. So you think about it, you've got your you've got you know you've got your phone up on your dash and you're driving down the interstate, and Waze knows ahead of you the traffic has come to a stop. You've got now your phone with forward collision is seeing the deceleration is expecting vehicles to decelerate in front of you because it knows that from Waze. Now your can your phone flashes you know warning warning prepare to break you know traffic stop the head. It's there. It's available. Mm-hmm. We just got to get it in there, and uh, I think it's great. Yeah, hopefully they'll do that, and uh, it's it makes sense. Let's, yeah. let's see it happen. I love that they're thinking about. It. I love that the conversation has started. So thanks. Um, switching gears, uh, we have discussed some really cool cars, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mention three that we've talked about because they had cool names. So we have talked about the Lamborghini Storado. We don't like it. But we like the name, the Dodge Magnum. Uh, we like it and we like the name. And of course, uh, the International Scout. Scout is a great name. And there's going to be a Volkswagen. Volkswagen like the name and they're going to come out with a new line of vehicles, BEVs that is called the Scout. So there's a lot of cool names. And we had the idea, hey, let's talk about five car names, five that we like and five that we hate. So uh, uh, Adams, why don't you start us off? Uh, give us just a couple or maybe one or two, maybe one that you like, one that you hate. Will do. Yeah. And th- th- this is good because, you know, I mean, we we all love words. We all love automobiles. And even if you don't love words or where they came from, you realize that, that words matter and they conjure a meaning, occasionally a word picture or something like that. And uh, though this is not on the list, can I throw an honorable mention for a cool car company name? Yeah. Vector Aeromotive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. You know, even if you don't like cars, you hear that and go, God, that sounds like a cool, edgy, high tech company. But anyway, okay, well, my favorite car name, and this one has, uh, by the way, a vector is like something from physics, it's angles and acceleration yes. and that sort of thing, has no real meaning. Uh, and what does Aeromotive mean? Aeromotive was his sort of tying in the aeronautic, you know, because he was a flyer. Uh, uh, Gary Weigert was a, was a, was a pilot. And he, so he tied in the aeronautics and the automotive and just, what do they call that? A, a portmanteau where you combine the words. I just, I don't, it's, it's, it, it's a good name. Okay. For, uh, for now a car and, uh, make and model. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pretty obvious one. I think we've all kind of, we may have mentioned this in casual conversation, the Jensen Interceptor. Oh, yeah. As a Great. cool car. First four wheel drive uh, vehicle uh, for sale. Yeah. Production there you go. Vehicle. There you go. And Production now, car. Production oh, car. there it is. Yeah. A rather ungainly rear that looks like it uh, uh, had a, a summer liaison with an AMC Pacer. But aside <laughs> from that, <laughs> And an attractive enough vehicle to be called an interceptor. And they actually started remaking that, you know, a, a modded up version of that in, in Europe for about, you know, 300 grand. Okay. Uh, and we may not have a photo of this. Do you want me to pick a bad one, Steve-O? Yeah, I like that. That's a good, good one. Okay. Well, here's, I, I, I kind of hate to do this one because the car is good. I felt bad about this. 
because the car is so good, but we're talking about a dumb name, the Ferrari La Ferrari. That was number one on my list, dude. <laughs> <laughs> for bad names. All right. Well, <laughs> high five for, for a bad name, right? <laughs> um, I have like stupidest name ever. Yeah. It's like, here's the new Ford, the Ford. It just it just makes no sense. They had all the talent in the world to come up with a better name. Yep, I have to agree with you. That was number number one on my list. So okay, okay. Well, all I'm right, sure it's so, alternates. All right, what's 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 a good one, Stefan? Since that was another bad one, I agree with you. It's not on my list, but it's a bad name. Uh, I guess since, since we're beating on Ferrari, um, I'm gonna have to go with Testarossa. I mean, even if you can't speak yeah. Italian. Just saying Testarossa. You just think you you think you're already an Italian speaker. And I just love I think that's the, one of the greatest names ever for a car. I love it. And it's got a great meaning. Yeah, I like a, a good name and a good story. Yeah, redhead for the red valve covers. Absolutely. Exactly. So that, that's and then so since you picked my number one, I'm gonna go with um I'm, you know, I'm I'm always uh talking about Ford. How about the Ford probe? Um, with the limited, yes. yeah, we beat up on the probe before the limited Uranus edition. With, you know. <laughs> a car for all proctologists to drive. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, oh my God. A good man. one. Yeah. So that, there's a good and a bad for me. All and right, Steve-O. I can't believe they, I mean, how did they get through committee? How did it get approved? It just seems, I mean, granted, it was, it was supposed to be a Mustang. So they were going to name it a Mustang. And they had to come up with a new name. And they had to come up with something pretty quick. I get that. But not probe. Come on, guys. They, they, they clearly met some aliens. And they, they got probed by the aliens. <laughs> it's just weird. I mean. Yeah. It is fet- weird. Fetishistic. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, I my number one good name is a car I actually owned. And uh, it wasn't a great car at all. I know this one. Yeah, Acura Legend. Legend. That's a great oh, name. That is a good name. Well, a great name, also for a perfect name for launching that car and that brand. Absolutely. The yeah, it was a legend the day it rolled out. I mean, that's what's so cool about it. Um, a big risk name, but they nailed it and they nailed the car. And yeah, I think that's a great name. They did, and and, and I, th- I think it's made even better uh, for the fact that they then uh, sort of eliminated naming their cars something cool like a legend with something stupid like a TL. Yeah, the legend was uh, replaced ultimately by the RL. Oh, the RL. A, it was such yeah. a complaint thing, but they had a TL too, Adams. I mean, they just went to from really great names, talk about pulling in your horns, and then they went to totally lame names. Uh, I'm going to pick on uh, BMW. I love BMW. I'm a big fan. And this, I'm going to say 530i, uh, but uh, it's not what you're thinking. My first uh, seminal moment in a car, uh, my taproot moment uh, was in a 530i in the 70s. And I thought that was a great name. So I have good and bad. Here's what I mean. 530i, good name when it's an inline six, three liter, five series car bad name when it's a two liter turbo four cylinder oh wow great point yeah great point it lost all its tie-in it it went from having meaning to redefining it to not having meaning you know mercedes did the same has done the same thing with the same thing same thing amen yep they're all doing it now i hate i hate all of it so hey and yet you can get a turbo s electric porsche Exactly. It doesn't even have <laughs> doesn't even have a motor, and yeah. I mean a, a combustion motor. So good right. point. Good point. Well, and, right, and, Adams. It, and the non turbos have turbos, so let's just like make it more confusing. Okay, my number two here, the Mercury Cougar Eliminator. Yes, that's a yes. good name. Yep. And you know, it's just it just had the look. I mean, Mercury didn't make a lot of cool cars, but that was flat one of them. And just the eliminator, sort of like a the drag racing bracket eliminator. I really liked it a lot. Yeah, it's a cool car. Okay. And on on the 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 bad list. By the way, you can't name a cougar 
a car a cougar now because it has a different a different name <laughs> or different meaning. Obviously, it's a different <laughs> you meaning. Were, you are but, so correct. But the cougar wasn't a cougar back then, so you can name a car a cougar. Yeah, hey, speak, nobody speaking. Had- Speaking of the Cougar, how about on my bad list of names, the Dodge Dart Swinger? <laughs> <laughs> so you, 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 do I get the Swinger or do I get the Cougar? Well, it depends <laughs> on what you want to do this weekend. <laughs> do you want your Swinger with the the the, the Paisley Swinger roof package? <laughs> yes. And the Levi's interior? Yeah, they had it all. They were cool. Yeah, the you're 70s, right. You, could, you couldn't 70s. say Swinger or Cougar. Yeah, the seventies were just a crazy, a crazy time, and the swinger was from the seventies. All right, on to a rather bad name. Every modern McLaren except the Senna. Oh, yes. M P four twelve dash C. What is that? <laughs> That's a math problem. That's not a car name. Oh yeah. Yeah, I you know when I, I've kind of lost you know I, when they first came out with the McLarens I thought you know cool cars but I, now that you mentioned the name it's like I have zero interest in them because the nomenclature I have no idea they all kind of look alike and they have different numbers and then they add an L on a T and it's like I have no idea what is what in those cars I know they're fabulous cars but you're right the nomenclature the way they've named those I just completely lost interest in them. I, I I totally totally agree. Uh, I don't know what the hell they are, and I look at all these different McLarens. I don't know seven fifty, seven twenty, six fifty. 650. I don't know what any of them mean. It's very confusing. They could have cleared that up very easily. There's a lot of alphanumeric stuff that's very confusing. Uh, you got to say the same thing about Audi Q5, A5. What? Um, I find that confusing, and it's worse that they say there's something e-tron. Uh, e-tron gt is e-tron an suv or is it a sports car is it a sports sedan uh, the answer is yes that's not the right answer yeah <laughs> well and you know i mean if, if mclaren's listening and we know they are <laughs> this is three out of three guys who are very car aware we we all love this stuff i could not the only one i can pick out of a lineup is really the center and of course i mean everybody can name an f1 from you know 92 but as far as the 675 and the 765 and the 570 i don't have any idea what's what i honestly you could you could drive up and one with no name on it i it would take me three guesses so yeah i liked when car names made sense steve that was a good point about the 530 back when it kind of meant something all right i'll, I'll jump in Stefan, you want to jump in or you want me to give a couple uh I'll, go ahead steve i'll do a good do a good i i am thrilled when i think back on these california sunshine names malibu bel air ventura monterey i like all those yeah they're cool but uh, i don't know (laughs) that thing is yeah they do hearken to something like but yeah they're okay names for me I never thought about them as the California Sunshine name, but when you just rattled them off, yeah. I mean, it kind of reminds me as much of a, um, it's as much a good car name as it was a good car period. Yeah. You know, it was all about freedom and fun and designers could just go wild and the car, it represented freedom to a lot of people who had not formally had it. And Lord, back then, when you turned 16, that was your, the dawning of a whole new world for what you were going to be doing. And what was it? The Malibu, the Ventura, the Monterey, the Bel Air, Bel Air, all the, I, it just makes me smile thinking about what cars meant to America at that time. Yeah. See the USA in your Chevrolet. Um, <laughs> uh, what, who's that singer? She's blonde and beautiful. I forgot her name. Doris Day. No, it wasn't Doris Day. It was, um, um <laughs> we'll think of it. Don't worry. Uh, um, and then uh, for, uh, bad. I think there's some cars that it's bad just because of the quality of the car. Pinto, Vega, Volare. They're crappy mm-hmm. cars. So even though the names maybe are good, uh, they're bad cars. Yeah. All right. I got a good one for you guys. The Mercedes Benz AMG Hammer. Hammer <laughs> time, man. I just think the AMG Hammer, that was just. So the Love listeners, the, the three. So Mercedes took the 300E, which was a breakout four-door sedan for them, breakout sedan for them, a fabulous car. And then 
AMG did their thing on it, kind of wide body that put a big V8 in it. And they were black and they were, this was just German nastiness, American style. Um, like this is like a demon or a Hellcat done by the Germans. And it was just, I saw one of those and I was like, oh my God, that is the coolest thing ever. Cause not only was it, th you would never think the Germans would have done that, but I love that car. And the name I think is perfect. Me too. I think you need to say it again, like when you when you were Dieter from uh, Sprockets. Say the, yeah. AMG. <laughs> the AMG AMA. It's AMA time. <laughs> and you're right, man. That was the Hellcat Mercedes style. That's yeah, exactly it was what just that was. it was just good old American automotive nastiness in a car, which is you know we love we all love that you know. So yep, yeah. and then I, for uh, I love that. Yeah. And then for um, the the testicle on wheels, the AMC Pacer, man. Pacer, that was just an awful <laughs> name for an awful car. It's good when they fit together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you want to throw rocks at it and you hate the name. Yeah. Yes. Well, you can't impregnate anything without a testicle. So thanks, Stefan. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I got a couple really quickies that I just love, and uh, these are just great names. And again, I think it's connected to the car. Uh, Cobra, I can't believe you didn't say that, Stefan. I was, on, I was saving ever. that for best for last. Oh, All right, then yes. I'll move on. I'll move on. Thunder now one. being but stolen. How about this? Mar Marauder. Oh, Marauder. Oh, Mercury Marauder. Nice. Yes. Nice. I forgot about that. That's a great Another name. Mercury. Whoever was in the naming department back then was on. Yes, the Marauder. That's a cool name. I got to agree. All right, so give us, uh, let's see. Who's up? I don't even know who's up anymore. <laughs> uh, who's well, got did, one? Did you do a bad along with your Marauder good? Uh, well, yeah, I got two bad ones because this just irritates the hell out of me because it's so stupid. Uh, Bolt and Volt. <laughs> I, I don't like either one of those names. I think they're <laughs> stupid. And they, they just... It seems like a like something you get at the at the at the hardware store. It's not a car. And when you failed with one, why would you use change just change one <laughs> one with a, a consonant? You know, and <laughs> <laughs> just make them both bad. Yes. All right, Adams. <laughs> okay, let's see. It's funny related to the one that Steve sort of whispered on 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 the good before he came out with Marauder. This one ties in. So, Steph, don't get nervous. The De Tomaso Mangusta. Uh, that's, a, oh, yeah. that's another one. That just makes you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm speaking the language now. But De Tomaso, who, of course, was Argentinian, so that's a Spanish -y name. However, it's got that Latin sort of flair. And the Mangusta, Steph, you probably know this. Why did he name it the Mangusta? Uh, I don't, I You're going to love this. Yeah. You're going to love this because at the time, uh, De Tomaso sort of fancied himself to be a competitor on the world stage, and he saw how good the Cobra was doing. Right. Yet the Cobra, the snake, had uh, – Steve, you got it? Yeah, it's yeah. a mongoose. Go for it. Mongoose. Go for mongoose. it. Mongoose. Yeah. The natural predator that, who was, that was quicker than a Cobra's strike was a mongoose. Reef. And I thought that was kind of – you know, it's one of those, those meanings that sort of ties in. I thought that was kind of cool. So that was my good one. And then bad – and I also want to kill the car. Nissan Leaf. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Uh, Leaf. Help me. <laughs> Good Lord. Did you guys know that the Leaf was a terrible attempt by Nissan to be an acronym? No. This is, this no. is not a joke, by the way. They, they, they truly, they, it's on their website. Leading environmentally friendly, affordable family vehicle. No, oh, give me what? a break. I know. Give me a break. I, give me a break. I'm I, next one I see, I'm gonna bash it on purpose. Okay. All right, Stefan. Why don't you right, wrap so it up? Just, so, just... that, yeah, so the Cobra, the Shelby Cobra, man. Yeah. I mean, Carol Shelby, that name. And you know, this was this was once again, this was early American hot rodding, just nastiness, taking an English car, but putting a big old honker V8 in it that was designed to just be faster than anything else out there. And, and uh, the Cobra was a perfect name. And there's lots of different stories how Carol Shelby came up with the name. We really don't know how he came up with the name, but um, it stuck. And uh, 
you know, amazingly on my car, I'm the, there's only going to be one Cobra in my vehicle. Um, when I'm, I'm building my, uh, my replica, it's, I'm not putting Cobra on the front emblems on the front of the rear, but I am going to put a Cobra emblem on the, um, uh, breather for the valve cover. It's going to have Cobra on it, but otherwise it's going to be AC. So, but that's yeah. the greatest name ever. What What is your horn button insignia there, Steph? It's going to be AC. Okay. As well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I agree with you. That is a super cool name. And the logo that maybe Pete brought design, I'm not sure, but the logo right, did, is yeah. also super yeah. cool. Yep, it is very cool. That may be the best name there is. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It it says what the car does. It's going to bite you. Uh, yes. it, sometimes it bites the driver, but yeah. it's a nasty car. Someone is getting bit with that car. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. quicker than you. It's dangerous. I mean, it's sneaky. I, yeah. Everything yeah. about yeah. that is what that car is. Yes. You got another bad one, or are we, we going to move on? Uh, let's see. Uh, the, the, the Gremlin, the AMC Gremlin. <laughs> yes. I mean, the Gremlin for a car name? Come on, Gremlin? I mean, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's it's like the, uh, we you know, we were just talking about the, the, the committee. How do I get through a committee, like a probe? I mean, come on. All right, it's time for this or that. And Adams, uh, you've got a really, really good this or that. Uh, this is I'm really curious to see what you guys say about this. I'm curious what you guys say about it too. And th- therefore I'll I'll toss it up, but I'm I'm gonna go last because I'm really curious about you guys' okay. pick. The uh the the first gen Acura NSX uh actually toward when there's the, the, the or the latter. So that that photo is actually Correct. So that's a this or that. And now we're back to the that or the this. And the, fir- the first gen car, there it is. Like that's an early car. That's a, a pre-98 version of it. But the body changed almost none at all during the time. A, an extremely low mile, one of these in the three liter or the three two up to whatever year they stopped, 2005. Uh, a, a low, low mile, 98 to 2005 is going to be approximately the same money as the new gen that talk about a long gestation period. When they finally came out with it, it was maybe a $220,000 to $30,000 car. And now they've dipped on down to about the same approximate range of $115,000, up to maybe one forty. dollars That money will buy you either of these NSXs, this or that. All right, let me go first, Devo. So, you know, listeners, you may not know about the NSX, but this was a Honda design, an all aluminum frame, advanced suspension setup, exotic mid-engine design. And they really, when they introduced they, this car, I mean, they, they shocked the world. And they put the Acura badge on it. And this car initially came out, everyone was paying more than what it was worth. And about 270 horsepower. Um they sold a respectable number of them and the car was designed to just be very good at what what it was advanced design but affordable but then again you know you pull up to the country club and the the cardiologist there is in his ferrari and he looks at you like you bought a seventy thousand dollar honda um so they really they wanted to democratize the cutting edge technology so but i look at these so in my mind it's like okay do i want analog or do i want the new version which is a hybrid and the only it's not technically hybrid they put electric in it to make it go faster um oh is it i just think the new one looks really cool i've seen them but i'd have to get can i can i get the the center version of the original nsx and call it a day <laughs> no. i'm afraid you'd have to cough up a little dough for so, the yeah but you can still get the best three two out there. Yeah, I, I'd have to go new on this one. I just think it looks so much nicer than the old. Oh, you like, just yank! I just got whipped. I know, I, you I know, I know. I just but I look at the pictures. I go back and forth between the two pictures, and when I, for me, just on pure aesthetics, you know, nostalgia would want the old one, but I just think the new one actually, you know, I'm not big on mid engine cars. In this kind of design but i 
I really do like the design of this car of the the new S of the new NSX. And I'd have to pick it merely. The only reason would be design. That's it. Okay. Plus, it's a heck of a car, and it's about twice the horsepower. So, in a yes. performance world, you have certainly chosen the winner. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I, I had exactly the same answer. The new one. Uh, I'm not crazy about the design of the old one, but mostly the performance is very disappointing. I've driven it. It's got a good top end. Um, I drove it pretty fast, um, but it's not that quick. It doesn't have tons of power. You have to really rev it. It's not an exotic sound. Uh, the new one. I've been in it. I, I've, I've ridden it as a passenger. It's got a much more exotic sound. Uh, it's probably synthetic, but it's got a much more, um, it's got a better sound. It's got a way more performance. I think it looks better. Yeah, I want the new one. Wow. Well, you guys, you guys uh, present a, a, a heavy argument. I honestly, on any given day, could vacillate between them all day long. Like you said, Steph, it's like, wow, you get nostalgia and you get sort of a little bit rarity and kind of a cool factor, et cetera. I feel like this car, the new car, the one we're looking at, if you were going to, if the, if in a this or that, if you were forced to do two things, keep it for five years and not sell it because of the profit, I'd have to choose the new one. I think you could live with it more. I think it would be more user-friendly, like Steve said. And I had a second gen, excuse me, the second version of Gen 1 NSX, and I put some miles on it. I'm telling you, below about 4,000 RPM, nobody's home. Yeah, it's kind of like the car in your background there, that little S2000. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Will we, will we ever miss a chance to make fun <laughs> of this car? Will we ever? <laughs> I can't believe it's still there. I keep I waiting to see something different. Actually, that's a poster of it. It does look convincing, though, doesn't it? <laughs> you, you'd almost think that was it. But, yeah, it's kind of the same world. It's the VTEC world. And if you don't love your your pedal buried in the carpet every time the nsx i you know for all the nsx fans out there who may tell me i'm wrong i i did not love that car below 4000 rpm and that's just not where you live in a car um it was very functional 10 times the reliability of most anything it compared to in the day and it compared to the 348 ferrari or the 355 at the time and it was i hate to say it and i i believe Ferrari read that NSX was a better automobile in almost every dynamic regard. Yes. But as far as the this or that, I'm choosing the new one. Well, there you go. How about that? We can. <laughs> and my old brain just got jogged. I did not look this up, boys and girls. I'm going to turn in my phone data to prove it. Donna Shore. Was that the lady? That's it. Name? Okay. That's it. Donna <laughs> Shore. <laughs> It came to me. It came in a dream. Uh, beautiful woman. Uh, see the USA in our Chevrolet. So um, and anyway. she sang that song not even quite as well as you did, Steve. You did <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Well, we are out of time. So, Stavad, close us out. That was fun. Hey, that was a good time. So, and I, I can't believe all three agreed on that, but those are some great names. Um, hey, listeners, thanks uh, for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, like, leave comments and tell your friends about us and we'll keep this going. You can check us out on YouTube, Apple. I don't know. Steve, we're now on uh what's it called? TikTok. TikTok. Yes. TikTok. There we go. We're TikToking people. <laughs> right.